Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to the final video in my Great Guitar Build of 2020 entry. Uh, the guitar is in many, many pieces. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to go together or if I'm going to succeed, but I think that by the end of this video, we're gonna have a pretty awesome guitar. If you haven't seen any of the other builders involved in the official competition, please check the links in the description below. Quick announcement, and this sucks because it makes me look like a bit of an idiot. We set up this guitar competition thinking, fantastic, raise money for charity, auction, excellent, cool. Uh, and we went ahead on that basis. Uh, a few weeks ago, we, had the thought that actually a lot more people in these times would be able to uh, enter into a raffle, smaller amounts of money, uh, but a, a larger amount of people would mean a lot more money for the for the charities. Uh, we went and spoke to our local solicitor who said, yeah, go for it, awesome, cool. Uh, turns out that was a little bit uh, silly. First of all, don't phone your local solicitor when it's a question of international law. Um, second of all, well, don't phone your local solicitor when it's a question of international law. Uh, so very basically, if we ran a raffle, we would be breaking the law in not only every country, but in particular with the states, in pretty much every single state in America. And I don't really want to do that. I would kind of like to, you know, go to Nam, for example, without getting in trouble. Anyway, so unfortunately, we're having to revert back to the original auction thing, so you can vote on Instagram as well. But the main thing is, this is about raising money for charities. So we've added the option to just donate money to the charities involved. Uh, it does not involve uh, entering into a competition. I am legally advised to say so. Every dollar donated to, for example, Brad Angos charity will count as a vote. Every single dollar um, spent on the guitar will count as a vote and there will be an Instagram vote uh, option as well. By this time next year, I sincerely hope that I have the license to run uh, an international lottery wherever I can. We've applied for the UK already, we're applying for various places in the US. Uh, hopefully we can do this the old, old way, the new, old, new way, new, old way. Burn it. Ah, yay! Made a sort of offhand joke about the fact that I was probably going to uh, chop my guitar up into a hundred pieces and turn it into a fence panel. So I think I'm going to do almost exactly that. I have given this a little bit of thought and I'm still not entirely certain. It is at this stage that many of you are going, Ben, you've gone one step too far. Um, you might be right. We'll see. I've got this. I took that out of it. I'm going to drill some holes. And then I'm going to chop some bits out with a chisel. And make some pieces with some wood and some stuff and some nonsense and fun and games. But I have a map. And I'm pretty sure I know where it's going to lead. And you are, for the first time, seeing a smidgen of what I have envisioned for this guitar. It is one thing making an instrument that is absolutely unique for something like the Great Guitar Build Off. It is another making that look good. Watch this space. So what I'm thinking is an inlay at the 12th fret based on an oval. And I think that could look pretty damn cool. I've been playing with texture. Yeah, I'm getting a nice pyrography sort of pre-burned effect, so I might not even need to get the blowtorch out. I think that's somewhat disappointing.
Now I'm going to chop off the ends of all of the frets, do some fret end beveling. I'm going to take a fret end dressing file and I'm going to just tidy up the fret ends and you end up with something that's nice and comfortable, easy to polish and attractive. I cannot tell you how much of a roller coaster this build has been. So that is the texture with shielding paint on it. And here is what that looks like. I'm pretty sure we've got our finish. In the end, the neck can look like whatever you want it to look like, but if it isn't comfortable, nobody's gonna play the guitar. I think that could look pretty cool. It's very relaxing doing something that simple. All in all, I'm really rather happy with that. The neck itself has been sanded down pretty much to perfection. I am now gonna level these frets. I'll use a fret rocker back to the permanent marker. I'm just painting everything that is going to be painted. I'm going to go through a few bottles of this. This is a little bit messy. The guitar is currently in a bit of a state. Anyway, for now, I need to rub off the excess shielding paint. Very, very, very happy with that. The only question really in my head at this point is what to do with the, with the top. The thought was to sand it, get a fine sanded finish, stain it black, and then do a shellac finish on the top. What I'll end up doing is, uh, is matching this, because actually, I really, really, really like it. <sighs> I do not like the look of the copper against the pewtery kind of color. Now, bear in mind, I have got chrome hardware, even though I'm doing something cool with it. I'm going to one of Adam Savage's favorite products of all time, Rub and Buff. Or at least this is Goldfinger by Dalla and Rowney, and it's the same sort of stuff. So here's the test I did. So it's a two-toned sort of effect. I'm going to engrave, or at least texture, the whole top of this guitar, because I am not going to be playing with the copper leaf, etc., and the two hour waiting time. And uh, that's pretty much a whole day's work to copper leaf the internals of this. This needs to cure just a little bit. And uh, while that's happening, I have some side dots to install. You thought I'd forget, didn't you? I nearly did. The neck is pretty much done. I love the feel of a raw, unfinished neck with this ethos, etc. I am not going to put any finish on the bare wood of the neck. Uh, the person who wins this can choose to put some finishing oil on. Uh, in fact, if you do win it and you want to, let me know and I will send some oil along with the guitar. But uh, I like it like this. I'm going to slow things down. Have you ever seen a frosted Odemar PK Royal Oak? It's the same sort of texturing that I've designed the whole guitar about. I don't have machines to do it. I'm just gonna be sitting here for a while, tapping away, but it is gonna be worth it. And the reason they do it is to make it look like the thing is splattered in diamonds without actually splattering it in diamonds. I think it's gonna be a, a good look. I've engraved the top and I've left the sides. Same thing with that. The tuner where you touch it, I've left that nice and polished. 
and I've engraved the edges. I am very happy with how the, uh, how the tuners have turned out. Onto the body. We've got some of the silver inside. You can see the internal cavities much more because there's just a little bit of variation there. I'm withholding judgment, but I think this may be the coolest finish I have ever managed to achieve. Shellac. This is gonna dull it down a fraction, but it's also gonna stop that from happening. That there, everybody, is a murder. This does not fill me with joy. That is actually just far too really big. Great guitar build off guitar for scale. I have shellacked every single surface of the guitar inside and out apart from the silver. Yeah, I'm leaving now, goodbye. I'm gonna go make another cup of tea up at the house and just abandon that one for now, I think. All right, he flew away. I've obviously decided to glue it together. I think it's gonna be strong enough. There are obviously options. If it proves to be problematic, I can very, very easily put a bolt or two in, or three. Two or three bolts is generally all that's required. Hey, Brad. Okay, it has been three hours or so, so I managed to get rid of a lot of the glue that was in there. I don't need to go in there and change any color or anything. That just, that looks fine. Hell yeah. If it all comes down to it, quite frankly, I could just put it together like this and be done. Stay away from that camera, Moxie. Say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. So those are planed uh, inside and outside to match the curve on the sides of the guitar. That needs to be done. The garden loose. Hashtag shed loose. I have wedges in place. This is going to hold the guitar together while I play with bending wood. So, well, we're fairly bendy. Where am I going to start? Okay. That's the inside. Nope, I've already, already cracked there. Poop. Foiled at the first pass. This was the other option. I've got these strips of aluminium that very, very easily, with a hammer and a bit of, you know, effort. All right, so as you hit metal, you work harden it, which means basically you're hardening it and it becomes more brittle and that causes, well, it'll crack in the end. Uh, you need to reheat it up to anneal it and make it soft again. If you cover it in permanent marker, Sharpie, etc., when the Sharpie has burnt off, that means it's reached the correct softness, shall we say. That's cooled down now, and, uh, and I can just bend it by hand, actually. <laughs> Crazy. Well, that was fun. We have something that is roughly the size we want, and the whole thing has got this on it. So I'm just gonna chop it off with a little bit of room to spare. I do want it to just be one whole thing all the way around. I really do. I am erring on the side of the potentially catastrophic at this point. I mean, we all knew that was where we were going, didn't we? I am going to glue this up. The sanding process has, uh, has etched the surface of the, of the aluminium very, very nicely. Um, it's nice and coarse and will take epoxy very well. Quick setting steel reinforced epoxy. Can I mix, apply, put it on the end of every single one of these things? I think that's gonna be about two or three minutes and then and clamp up. I mean, it's gonna be tight. I have cleaned the metal with methylated spirits and let that dry. I have gone through with the, a die grinder in the multi-tool and I have cleaned all of the wood surfaces that I'm gonna be gluing to. I have got this six minute epoxy. This is JB Weld, this is Mm -hmm. Hardcore stuff. Sets in six minutes, cures in four hours. I think that six minutes should be okay. I'm feeling very zen.
near as I can tell it, that was about six and a half minutes or so. We'll have to see what this looks like in the cold, cold light of sobriety. There ain't no going back now. See you in four hours. <laughs> okay. Crikey, this stuff's good. Okay. So the plan was to play around with rivets. I, I want a little bit more mechanical strength in here. I'm going to be putting screws in. Something like that. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have a guitar. That texture, this finish. Incredible. I am so happy with it. I've got some carving to do. I've got some shaping to do. I've got some refinishing to do. Black. I am going to both hide the screws and peen them over. I've got some painting to do in there. Both smoother and more textured. Too far? Let me know in the comments. I, I just got a new lens. I'm really, really happy. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a little bit close. Ha <laughs> ha. This is cured. I have got to put this guitar back together. Back together? I've got to put it together now. I'm very happy with how these have turned out. I'm not putting these strings up under tension because I know that many of you are waiting for the neck to fall off. But we'll see. So yeah, I'm just gonna put these on loosely and gently and then we'll tension it up together. Let me know in the comments below who of you think this neck is gonna fail because of the neck pocket and who of you think this, um, everything's gonna come apart because the body is so fragile. Uh, and just for good measure, who thinks I'm going to succeed? I win. It's officially a guitar. And it actually has some sustain. Even though it hasn't been set up yet. Nah. We have sustain, we have a neck that is not moving, we have strings that are almost stretched, we still have wiring to do. And there doesn't appear to be a hornet anywhere near me right now. It's giant. It's scary. <laughs> it's on the guitar. We have a guitar, people. It does guitar -y things. I need a strap. I need to see if this actually does have neck dive like uh, you doubting Thomas's think. Or should I put the uh, steel back plates in first? The moment of truth. Okay. 
fall over. There ain't no problem with this. I was asked uh, in a comment why guitar builders only ever noodle. It's because we're guitar builders, not players. Um, uh, I also hear no noise. Is my... <laughs> there we go. Soldering irons are notorious. I've built guitars where just having a soldering iron in the room um, makes a horrible noise. This has to be right in there next to the pickup to make some noise. Lead and boost channel. We're done, we're done, we're done. We've got no noise. We've got no necks falling off the guitar. We've got no bodies disintegrating themselves. We have a great guitar build off guitar that is built, almost. I have to cut out the, the, the back plates. They're gonna be this really cool steel with squares cut out. But you don't need to see that because, because you don't. Thank you for watching. I want you please to, if you haven't yet, subscribe to Crimson Guitars. Consider supporting our Patreon and all that jazz, but most importantly, go and watch all of the other videos. Go and watch all of the other builders who have been building these guitars and decide who you want to win the Great Guitar Builder of 2020. There are different ways of doing that. Uh, the guitars are being auctioned off. This guitar is being auctioned off. The final price realized is one of the three ways that we're gonna choose who wins this year. I kinda don't want to win, because it's really, I set up the competition, but but also don't want to lose, so use that information as, as you will. Donate to the charities involved, go on our Instagram page to the post of the builder and like that post. And you know, if you if you want to vote for everybody to win, then then do that. But go and watch all of the videos. Uh, this is gonna be incredible. It turns out that Jimmy, I, I watched Jimmy Deresta's uh, Instagram story the other day while I was doing this, he was doing exactly the same, only with fire and steel and welding. So, I mean, frankly, he deserves to win, because, yeah. Thank you very much. This has been a very, very, very interesting experience. We are going to nail down what happens next year. We're doing it again. We are definitely going to run both the main competition and the great guitar build along as well next year. Thank you very much, this has been an incredible journey. I will speak to you guys later. Look ma, no neck dive. No neck dive whatsoever. Whew. Hell yeah. Am I allowed to bid on my own guitar? Thanks for watching, goodbye.